he was 25 and just establishing himself as an artist when the First World War came along. By early 1917, he was serving on the Western Front. The conflict transformed his career. Later in 1917, Nash became an official war artist and painted a series of remarkable war paintings that went on to make his name. Some of his war paintings capture the horrors of Passchendaele. They are, in a way, still landscapes, but here, nature is not so much alive as being murdered by the madness of men. And Nash's trees have become corpses that will never see the light of day again. The First World War changed Paul Nash, and I would say, for the better. It made him more worldly, more ambitious, it gave his work a harder edge. And in the 1920s and 30s, he emerged as one of the great figures in British modernism. He became increasingly interested in the cutting-edge art that was coming out of the continent. He experimented with abstraction and surrealism. But he produced his finest work when he combined this modern sensibility with his lifelong love of the English countryside. He's made this painting in 1935. It was inspired by the great standing stones he'd seen at Avebury in Wiltshire. But what he's done here is compare those ancient monuments that were thousands of years old with the abstract forms of modern art. Because for Paul Nash, the English landscape was a place in which past and present nature and culture rubbed shoulders. Again and again, he turned the English landscape into an echo chamber of his own mind, a place where hopes, dreams and fears came together. And it became particularly evocative in 1939, when another world war broke out. In 1940, he was again appointed an official war artist. This is Totus Meer, which means Dead Sea in German. And at first it indeed seems to be an agitated ocean. But as you begin to look closer, you begin to realise it isn't actually natural at all. Because this Dead Sea is actually made almost entirely of dead machines. German warplanes that have been shot down over Britain and dumped here to rust away into the soil. You can just make out the barred cross of the Luftwaffe wing and in the distance, a small swastika. It's really difficult to know what to make of this painting. Is it propaganda? Is Paul Nash telling us that despite the Blitz, Britain is still winning? Or is he telling us that in war, everyone's a loser? Conflict, once again, had brought out the best in Paul Nash, but it was also beginning to take its toll on him. His health deteriorated throughout the war, and in 1942, he stayed with a friend here in Oxfordshire in the hope that the fresh air would improve his chronic asthma. 